Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss about fail-safe component in Snowflake permanent tables, which is a very important part in data protection lifecycle. Okay. So what is fail-safe? Fail-safe is nothing but a non-configurable seven-day period for Snowflake permanent tables, which starts immediately after our time travel period ends. Okay. So this particular diagram explains the data protection lifecycle in Snowflake and let me explain that using which you can understand the fail safe property in better. Okay. So suppose currently we are having a table in our Snowflake cloud warehouse. I can access the table. I can execute different kind of queries for analysis purpose or ETL operations or ENT operations. Right. Now suppose I am doing some transaction operations. I am doing some insert, update, delete, etc, etc. So what will happen? The table will go to time travel zone. Okay. So using time travel, I can go back to past and in the past state, whatever table data was there on top of that, I can query, right? So using select at or select before and undrop comment, these kind of comments I can execute during time travel zone. So as I have already discussed, time travel is dependent on retention period and maximum for standard edition, you can do time travel up to one day for enterprise or business critical accounts. You can maximum do time travel up to 90 days. Okay, that is up to maximum 90 days. You can go back to past and query your data. But all depends on retention period or retention time what we are configuring in our Snowflake table, right? So once our time travel is over, like for example, for a particular Snowflake table, retention period is configured as five days. That means what? That means maximum I can go back in past up to five day and then I can query the past state. Okay. Suppose five days over. That means time travel is over. Okay. After that, the Snowflake table will enter in fail safe zone. Okay. And in fail safe zone, what is the duration? For permanent table, it is seven days. For transient table, it is zero day. What is transient table? I have not discussed yet. I will be covering in my upcoming video. As of now, you can simply understand a transient table is nothing but a table for which fail safe window is zero days. Okay, that is fail safe is not available as a feature for those kind of tables. As simple as that. And for any tables what we generally use in Snowflake using create table, comment, whatever table we create, those are called permanent tables and for them fail safe time is seven days. And it is a non-configurable period. It is not like for some particular permanent table, you will be configuring fail safe day as five day. For another permanent table, you will be configuring as three day, etc, etc. For all the snowflake permanent tables, the fail safe timing is seven days only. Okay. So that's why here I have written three very important properties. Number one, no user operations or queries can be executed when the table is in fail safe zone. Like for example, when the table is in time travel zone or within retention period, I can use select at or select before or undrop these kind of queries. I can execute and I can query the past state data, right? But when the table is in fail safe, I cannot do those kind of stuff. Okay. And if you want to recover your table beyond time travel, then only fail safe is useful. That is another point which is obvious based on our discussion I have told you, right? That fail safe starts after time travel. That means suppose you by mistake did something with your data and your data is corrupted. And suppose time travel period is also over. That is retention period is also over. Okay. Then also if you want to recover, then this fail safe period can help you if it is within seven days. Okay. Right. And another important point is, it is not like some account admin or any particular role can recover the data if the data is in fail safe. Only Snowflake support team can recover that. So you have to raise a ticket and they can help you to get back your data. Okay, to recover your data. So that's what important points about fail safe. Okay, now let's try to understand fail safe in a better way using this kind of Excel data. So suppose we are having a table having name employee. Okay. And suppose today is 1st January 2019 and currently at 1 p.m. I am doing some transaction, maybe some insert, update, delete, etc. queries I am executing. And suppose for this employee table, the retention period is set to one day. That means what? That means in past I can go back up to one day. Okay. So suppose now at 1st January 1 p.m. if I am modifying something, if required, I can recover up to 2nd January before 1 p.m. Anytime I can recover back because retention period is set to one day. That means within 24 hours, I can do time travel and get back my data. 
Okay. So after 24 hours, that means on 2nd January at 1 p.m., time travel period is over. The retention period or retention time is over, right? Then the table will enter in fail safe period. That particular whatever changes we did, that particular old data will enter in fail safe period for 7 days. Okay. And suppose that time the table was having 1 GB of data. So in fail safe, for this particular employee table, we are having 1 GB of data. And total amount of data is also 1 GB because first time we are doing some transactional changes using insert, update, delete and the table reached or entered in fail safe zone for the first time. So currently in fail safe zone also 1 GB of data is there. Okay. Now again at 1st January, same day at 5 PM on the same table, I am doing some more insert, update, delete, etc. operation. Okay. So retention period is one day. That is after 24 hours, that is at 2nd January at 5 p.m. The retention period is over for this particular state, right? So again, the data for the employee table will enter in fail safe period for 7 days. Okay. Another 1 GB data will be stored in Snowflake in the back end as 1 GB data. So roughly that is 1 GB. Obviously, we are doing insert update delete. It can vary. But as of now, you can understand roughly 1 GB of data is there. So another 1 GB we are basically sending in fail safe zone. So totally now in fail safe zone, total 2 GB of data is present. 1 GB data is for these particular changes. Another 1 GB of data for these particular changes what we did in 5 PM on 1st January. Okay. Now on 2nd January, we are not doing any changes. Okay. So no operation is performed. So obviously the data will not be going to any fail safe zone. So that's why here I have written 0 GB of data. Only if the retention period is over and if you have some changes, then only it will go to fail safe. Unnecessary it will not go, right? So currently fail safe is 0 GB because currently we have not done any transactional operation. So till now, till 2nd January, we are having 2 GB of data in our fail safe zone. Okay. Now on 3rd January also, we are not doing any kind of transactional operation. Okay. So basically retention period is one day after 24 hours also no changes as of 4th January. So fail safe period is 7 days again by default. So 0 GB of data will be going to fail safe and already 2 GB of data was there. That is only remaining in our fail safe zone. Okay. On 4th January on this table at 7 PM, suppose I am doing some changes. Okay. Some transactional operation I am doing, insert, update, delete, etc. So retention period is one day. So after 24 hours, the time travel period is over. Okay. So 4th January, if I am doing some transaction at 7 p.m., that means at 5th January, 7 p.m., the time travel period is over and the data is going to fail safe zone. That again, roughly 1 GB of data is going to fail safe zone. So now, in our fail safe zone, total 3 GB of data is there. Although in our actual employee table, we are having only 1 GB of data. Okay. So again, on the same day, on 4th January, at 9 p.m., I am doing some another set of transaction. Okay. So again, after one day, after 24 hours, on 5th January at 9 p.m., the retention period will be over. Time travel is done. And then the data will automatically go to fail safe zone. So another 1 GB of data will be going to our fail safe. So now it becomes 4 GB. Okay. So hope you are getting from this particular data that in fail safe zone, the data will be keep on growing and it might happen that you are having a very small table, maybe 1 GB of data, but in fail safe zone, you are having 10 or 15 or 20 GB of data if you are doing rapidly different transactions. Okay. Right. So that you need to have a very careful attention. Otherwise, you might be having a very huge cost with respect to Snowflake storage because Snowflake will take charge or money for the storage, right? Because they are storing the data. So, obviously, they will charge you for storage. Although you are not doing any operation, but storage cost obviously will be billable on the company side, right? So, that you have to wisely think and then create the table. If you don't want to recover your data beyond the time travel, then better switch to transient table for which by default fail safe is zero day that means fail safe property is not there okay so only time travel you can do after time travel the data will be completely lost no recovery is possible as simple as that okay right so i hope the concept of fail safe is clear to you 
and let me show you in snowflake console so like earlier we explored the time travel how much amount the snowflake is taking for storing different versions for our time travel data same kind of query i can use for failsafe also like here i can query in our account admin role if you are using then in account usage schema there is a view called table storage matrix and there one fill safe byte column is available okay so if i just simply query this particular table see let's start from table storage matrix let me just show you so here you will see that there is a column available called fill safe bytes okay how much bytes are used in fail safe like here as of now currently i am just using this particular account for demo purpose so there is only one small amount of data is there in fail safe bytes okay if you want to get more information in a better way then you can convert that bytes to gigabytes by dividing the bytes to 1024 three times and then you can basically query this kind of table or view okay so if i execute here you will see that fail safe storage usage data you will be getting like here this much amount is used in fail safe this much memory is used for storing fail safe data like that information you are getting not only that if you are in account admin if you go to account and then here you can go to average storage used here also fail safe option is there if you click on fail safe it will basically give you the idea how much amount of data is it is using for fail safe storage purpose okay so i hope you are getting the importance of fail safe that is if you want to recover your data beyond time travel or retention period then you can use that but also you need to keep in mind that fail safe will charge huge amount of cost so for those kind of tables which is not that much important or you can regenerate the data if it is lost or corrupted due to some reason then better avoid the fail safe property okay because by default fail safe property is implemented in all the permanent tables and it is seven day okay so have a very careful note in this particular property and at the end let me just go through some quiz questions on fail safe which you can find interesting maybe you can think this as interview questions so first question can be the account admin is the only role that can restore data from fail safe zone true or false pause the video and try to think about the answer okay so the correct answer is false okay because account admin cannot restore the data from fail safe zone only snowflake support team can okay coming to the next question the default value for fail safe timing for permanent table is set to 0 day 1 day 7 day 90 day obviously it is non configurable 7 day so correct answer is option 3 okay next question we can change the fail safe period for permanent table from 7 day to 1 day true or false obviously correct answer is false we cannot change that's what i was keep on highlighting one particular word that is non configurable 7 day period is fail safe okay so next question if time travel is set to zero day for permanent table and the table is dropped the table will immediately enter in fail safe period true or false so obviously correct answer is true so what i told you that by default fail safe will be there for all the tables and fail safe will start immediately if time travel ends okay now suppose time travel is set to zero days for permanent table right that means if you do some changes automatically it will go to fail safe directly right so the answer correct answer is true okay so i hope you enjoyed this particular small quiz this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you haven't subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you